This is Project C and it's falling apart. It's been empty for over 10 years. The house has been vandalized. There's no electrics. There's a wasp infestation. Ceilings are falling down and it's basically a jungle of ruins. I'm gonna be doing a full before and after house flip series for this house. So to follow the journey, head to playlists on my YouTube channel and look for Project C. I'm Steve and this is Flipping Johannesburg. So I've been doing this a long time, but this still startles me. I get nerves commencing with the house that's as bad as this. So how did I find this place? Well, I actually flipped the house next door. That's Project O, that side. And that's when I peered over the wall and spotted this butte. Okay, well, not a lot of people would call it a butte. Oh my word, that is terrible. Looks abandoned. Oh, these fixer uppers just gravitate towards me. Maybe this can be the next flip. The company across the road owned this house and they were trying to get business rights here to convert it to extra parking for their head office, but they were unable to do so. So when I approached them, they were keen to sell. So this is a 1000 square meter stand, three beds, three baths, laundry room, double garage, pool and garden. Purchase price was 800,000 Rand. And this is Walterfried and Park, Johannesburg, bordering Constantia Kloof. It's quirky, it's quaint, it's got that compact cottage feel, gabled roof, and I do quite like the green on the roof. But there's no denying it's in shambles and there's a lot of work, but guys, it's easy to see the potential. And that's where I get quite excited. But the work does add up. And that is a reality on flips, as we know. Just be careful of the wasps over there. Let's take you through the house. Look at this handle, it's definitely forced open. Have you ever seen a house without an electrical DB board? It's all gone. That's a warm welcome for you, eh? I love your reaction, Chris. But this is what 12 years of neglect looks like. And unfortunately, it's not only that. Guys broke into the house and what they do is they monitor on the street. If there's no activity and if it's a bit overgrown, they try their luck, they break in get through the ceilings and I think they were living here for a few days probably try to start a fire could have burnt the house down and I even saw one of the guys bags in the garage and unfortunately they stole a lot of the items so if you look at these windows throughout the house the levers and handles are gone they were brass so there's value there the electric system as a whole is gone plugs light switches light fittings and yeah it's terrible and it's it's what we have to deal with in South Africa. It's a little bit more complicated to flip a house here than it is in the States. But moving on, this is the formal lounge. This is the dining room. And this space is a TV room. And this was originally part of the outside patio and it was enclosed in to be part of the house, which I like. Um, this was the original outer wall, these two walls here. You can see further preventative measures so no one else gets in the house boarding up and these wooden frames I would like to keep so we'll see if we can but yeah definitely a massive cleanup needed these cobwebs and that's the thing it is really dirty like on the walls as well and you always wonder how walls get this dirty because it's not an offensive paint color but yeah floors are probably going to have to be changed as a whole they're damaged in some places not laid amazingly and heading to this side, if you stand here, you can get quite a nice view. You can see all four rooms here. Kitchen, formal lounge, dining, and TV room. Now picture this. That wall, gone. The wall between the kitchen and the formal lounge, gone. This archway, gone. You know how much I love my archways. Now with that, you have open plan living. Let more light in, it'll feel bigger. So to me, that's a no-brainer. This is the only wall that I'm not too sure about because it might be nice to have some separation between these two rooms, but let me know what you guys think on this wall. The kitchen. <laughs> it's derelict, ramshackled actually. I mean, they've taken everything. Sinks, taps, oven, light fittings. Well, this one, they got off, but uh, they left it here for some reason. I mean, rotten shelves. It's properly bad. 
And this is the thing, we're just going to have to strip this further. It's really hard to work with existing elements, um, even if it's solid doors like this. So it's most often easier just to sell or give away. Opening up this wall will really make a difference to this space. It'll let more light in, it'll feel bigger because it's a small kitchen and we've only got the one window letting light in. Onwards with the tour. The house doesn't end here. Oh, this is... This is bad, eh? The smell. <clears throat> and so this is a scullery and this section was extended on. We'll show you when we get onto the roof. But what they did, which does not make sense to me, is they dropped the slope of the roof. So what it's done is it's caused this section of ceiling to be too low. So we've got work here to sort this out. We might have to change the floor level over here. And if we head through here, there's a door that leads out. So I originally thought staff room for here. <laughs> um, and this is where they originally broke in. But I think it's a bit small for a staff room. A laundry room makes sense. And many South Africans will be familiar with this type of setup in staff rooms with this shower over toilet, tiny bathroom. I mean, I don't know how this operates. And uh, where's Im? We've uh, a few minutes into the tour and we've lost the cameraman already. Conveniently when we enter the smelly room. <laughs> and this section, I don't know, it's, I wouldn't put a shower here, maybe space for a washing machine or a linen wardrobe makes sense to me but uh, yeah let's get out of here quickly <laughs> this is the first bathroom on the left and you can see they took all these bathroom fixtures stole all of it check that looks like they closed these uh, air bricks with paper i suppose that's one way of doing it but it's almost a guarantee you'll see low level toilets on flips. And the nice thing with these old toilets is these big systems. Guarantees a proper flush. So yeah, I would change this layout to a shower, vanity and toilet. You know, I have never understood why these old homes have these fan light frames with the, the glass at the top. And it's always passage and main bedroom such a bugbear for me and i don't know the reasoning so if you guys know let us know what the purpose of these were back in the day first bedroom on the right you can see it's quite small so that's my concern but we'll be able to work with this interesting floors but i cannot wait to pull these up and see what's going on underneath Got some clear water damage on the ceiling there. And yeah, like I said, the house is falling apart. There's two more bedrooms and let's start this side, which in my mind is the main bedroom. But the problem here is it's very small and you can see with reference to me, that's a problem. Um, and look above here, this bulkhead design is very strange. We need to fix that. Onto the bathroom. I'm still trying to work out if this tiling was half complete or if this was the vagrants that stripped it out. Problem number two in this space. I don't know if you can spot it in this bathroom. The wardrobes are in the bathroom and that will not work. Now, I've had a look on the roof with my builder. This was originally the exterior wall of the house. This part was built on as an extension and you can see the crack that formed. It wasn't done that well. Now, the main reason why this is too small is you need your wardrobe in the room. So what would be ideal is to remove this wall and build a single brick wall somewhere here. So you've got your wardrobe in the bedroom and it leaves you with a little bit more space. So that we can do because this is no longer a load bearing wall. The load sits on the outer wall now. However, problem number three. And it's just crazy. I've never seen this before. We always see something new on flips. Different ceiling heights. <laughs> so basically what happened is they just built this on independently of the rest of the house. They didn't make sure the levels were right. The trusses are of a different size. It's sloping down that way. 
So the problem is if this wall goes and we shift it here, we can have a section yeah, where we have differing ceiling heights, which will look rubbish. So something we're working hard on to solve. We will come up with a solution. We always do with flipping Johannesburg. Now this room is a similar size and it's the same extension that happened here. It mimics that room. But what I want to touch on is I'm sure you've spotted underfloor heating in most of the rooms. And it's that debate of is it really a value add? And most of the time not because you could leave it in. House is new but four months down the line it breaks because you don't know the integrity of the system. So it's often better just to strip it out. Come through here where it leads into a bathroom separated by this wardrobe. Um, it's a strange layout and what is this? Sellotape. I don't know if they've used that as cornice or to hold the ceiling up but uh, that's shoddy. <laughs> So my initial thoughts were we don't necessarily need to remove this wall but we would just really need to engineer this layout well. Um, we can potentially close one of these window frames in. Um, so yeah, that's this section of the house. It's a compact home. We've got the three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Let's take a look outside. Finding a property like this at a discount is going to give you the best chance of making a decent profit on a flip. Now the best opportunities for discounts are at sheriff auctions, which are when banks obtain a court order to have a property sold at public auction. Now the reason they go so cheap is that not a lot of people know about them or where to find them. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There's a website called Sheriff HQ, which lists the upcoming sheriff auctions in the country and will send you weekly emails to keep you updated. I've been using it for years. So I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. And this is what I want to do more of, giving you guys effective tips so you can start your flipping journey. So you can deduce a lot by getting on the roof and have a look. This is where they did the extension for the bathrooms and the roof tiles are a different texture to the rest of the roof and have a look at the ridge it's um, bulging a bit here so we need to reset this and reset the roof tiles you can see the same story here and we opened up the roof and that's when we discovered the truss issue which caused the ceilings to be of a different height so this section here that hasn't been painted this is the tv room that used to be the outdoor patio and they enclosed it in with walls to be part of the house and then they built this as the patio and it's got this style roof that lets the light through and it's actually fiberglass i'm not a fan of it you can actually see the fibers it's so worn down but i'm even less of a fan of the gutter layout and the gutters sit this side of the wall which is a design flaw because when they get gunked up like they were the water overflows and damages the timber the rafters below the gutters should be on the outside of the wall so that you don't have that issue and now we're going to have to replace a lot of the timber and we're going to replace this roof as well definitely but we'll show you in more detail when we go down so have a look here this section was added on it's a little bit lower than the rest of the roof and it's what we saw in the scullery which has caused that lower ceiling and another problem is you're going to have immense water flow onto this roof and this side is particularly a problem because you're getting flow going side on to those roof tiles and that's going to be a water problem and you can already see how this is coming off this waterproofing so we're going to have to put a gutter system here definitely to sort this out so check how bad this roof sheeting looks on top of the garage particularly on the side here but we can still work with it it just needs to be secured barges on the side beam fill and flushing so this is the patio and pool area the overgrown swamp it's really bad but I do like the lushness and the fact that it's surrounded by trees. And this space is really great. You can see here the damaged timber, like I was talking about, because of the gutters sitting this side of the wall. And we're really going to make this space beautiful. Great bry area this side. Jeez, I keep getting a fright with these wasps. <laughs> and if we head down 
this way. You've got quite a nice space this side and it's already been paved quite nicely so we can just do a pressure wash to neaten this up and this will be a nice feature with lounges and that by the pool so I think we're going to spend time turning this into something great. So I've got a lot of experience with yucca trees like this because I have to deal with them on every site and they just expand and expand. And have a look at the crack. This is where they extended on obviously we always see this and what is interesting to me is the size of the crack just increases when you go higher up. So this is usually an indication that the building has shifted like this. So Praga and myself did some investigation just to see if the foundation was adequate on this side which would have been the sign of a bigger problem but we've dug and we've had a look and it's solid it's over 600 mils deep which is perfect so no underpinning of the foundation required at least just a crack repair and the reason this happened is because they didn't tie in the extension to the existing building or put an expansion joint so we'll just uh, fix it up stitch it and move on i'm scared to see what i might discover in here chris do you want to have a look Okay, not too bad. There's a lot of repair work on the boundary walls. As you can see, quite a patchy job here using a geezer drip tray just to <laughs> keep it closed temporarily. But we need to trim a lot of the trees along the boundary before we can start on the wall repair work. And the jungle continues around the back of the house. This is the back door leading into that laundry staff room. And this is the back of the garage, which is open this side, but it is really spacious and a nice value add. We've got a crazy amount of wasp nests up there. Check it out. It really needs to be sorted out. We've got a double precast wall. Have a look. And it's kind of falling over. And then there's a bit of a gap. And then this one. So major trimming there. Now the hard part starts, the budgeting and the balancing act of creating a new home without blowing the budget. Because there is a ceiling on the sales price you can get for this house. And unfortunately, it's not as easy as replacing what's broke and keeping what isn't. So we start with getting electrics in so we can use a plug or two, getting a working toilet and trimming this crazy mess. So stay tuned for episode two for the commencement of the flip. And remember, this house will be on sale in a few months. So if you're looking to buy, stay tuned. A sub to the channel would be amazing. And hit the like button if this is the most dilapidated, derelict, ramshackled and ruined house you've seen in a long time. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.